Hi guys, I wanted to share with you my favourite reads of recent times, what I'm about to read and what I'm reading now, and I just thought it might be interesting if you, like me, love books reading. I also am really into audiobooks and radio since um, changing the way we kind of listen to music and stuff in the house, and I'll touch on that at the end of the video. But to start with, I thought I would go with non-fiction, and I have two titles that I've read in the last couple of months that I've really enjoyed. So the first one is um, Darkest Hour, and this is a tie-in with the movie. Obviously, um, what is his name? Gary Oldman just got the Oscar for portraying Churchill. So this book is by Anthony McCartan and he wrote the screenplay for the film and he also wrote the screenplay for The Theory of Everything. And he just gives more depth than they're able to do in the film and more detail about the events of May 1940. Churchill had just become prime minister and basically um, Hitler was raging through Europe and the prospect of him actually invading this country was a possibility and it's about the events and the decisions and the leadership and all of that and also about political rhetoric and how Churchill was able to sort of galvanise the nation behind him and I find it, found it very interesting. It's called The Story Behind the, the Motion Picture, Darkest Hour, How Churchill Brought Us Back from the Brink and it says here... Um, somebody who's a sort of authoritative Churchill biographer says impeccably researched, provocative and thrilling. I couldn't put it down. Yeah, it re read like a novel in a way, even though it's non-fiction. And there's some pictures and stuff which support the text. Um, and it just talks about interesting aspects of what was going on at that time. But um, you don't have to be like, you don't have to know about that time too much to read this. It's accessible. It's not a great weighty tome and I just find Churchill fascinating and because I'd just seen the film I picked up the book the next week because I kind of loved the film but it zones very specifically on one aspect of it and a very short period of time and so by reading this I could gain more if you know what I mean I was interested it piqued my interest in the book gave me more information I really enjoyed that and the other non-fiction read that I've enjoyed, and I think I might have even mentioned this before on my channel, is by Joe Biden, former Vice President of the United States, and it's called Promise Me Dad, A Year of Hope, Hardship and Purpose. And this is basically his account of um, what it was like for the family and for him losing his son to cancer and what they went through and his relationship with his boy and... Um, who was also in public office and how they had to deal with some of it, you know, as a private family. You know, this guy, his son, Bo, had ch young children and a wife and also, but they are public figures, they're a public family. Um, and I just found it really interesting and the tone and the way that he writes, I found actually very uplifting. And as I was reading it, I kind of, there are different stories of different events and meeting people and how you know, he. this is the second time that he had faced that kind of heartbreaking loss in his life. Um, his first wife and baby daughter were killed in a car accident um, quite a long time ago. And he kind of found a way forward to live positively. And, and, and then he had this other challenge with his son being ill. And just, I just find the way that he writes and the way that he talks um, when I've seen him interviewed very uplifting and I just really connect um, with the way that he is and I, I really admire him so I really enjoyed reading this book and if I was going through hard times or God forbid loss or anguish in the future I think I would look read this book again or dip into it to sort of lift up my spirit I really enjoyed this fiction if you want just like a really easy to read but really gripping thriller um, I actually really recommend The Woman in the Window I could not put this book down um, it's got it the story is not overly complex but it's very compelling it was quite near the end that I figured out what I th I'm not going to say too much what I thought was behind it all um, it plays with reality it's got psychology it's basically about this woman who has agoraphobia and can't leave her house and she sees things um, her relationship with the outside world is mainly like online and with limited interactions with like her therapist she has a tenant in the basement and then she kind of snoops on all the people who live around the park where she lives in New York and she sees something and then events kind of spiral out of control a little bit and it's just really gripping. I don't think it's going to win any like prizes but it's just not it's not trashily written it's just not 
massively going to win any awards for like a groundbreaking novel of the year but it's a really genuinely good read and I zipped through this in like under a fortnight and I just couldn't put it down um and then the other two books are parts of like series I love book series I really loved last year the Deborah Harkness trilogy um Discovery of Witches which um Christina Brawley mentioned in a favourites video and that got me into those and I've been missing that since they've kind of gone um, so I've just started reading um, this which is The Seven Sisters which is by Lucinda Riley and it is the first in I think six or seven books about a group of adopted sisters they l grew up in an amazing huge mansion on Lake Geneva and um, is it Lake Geneva? I think so and they have this eccentric kind of billionaire father and then right at the very beginning so it's not a spoiler he dies and um it's how events unfold and they find out about their i think each book focuses on one of the sisters and their backstory how they came to be adopted um and i think i'm hoping because i've only just started this i'm hoping that over the course of the books we're going to learn a bit more about this eccentric figure and how he put this how and why he put this family together and lived the way that he did he was very mysterious they didn't really know that much about him although he was very loving and I have to say I don't think it's similar to to this I don't think it's easy reading it's not trashy I can't read really naff chick lit I just can't do it it's too cheesy I know exactly what's going to happen next I hate that but this is engaging but it's not going to be like really tricky to follow um and as I said I'm really enjoying the tone and the style of it so far, so let's hope I can get my teeth into this series. I will update you when I finish this one. And then another, my other favourite, or probably my favourite ever, like series of books about one character, are the books by C.J. Sanson that follow Matthew Shardlake. He's the um, medieval hunchback lawyer who works in Lincoln's Inn at the time of King Henry VIII, and the the period is so vividly described you really really f can imagine it it's just so well done and oh they're just they're like who done it so there's loads of them there's dissolution is the first one about the dissolution that focuses on the dissolution dissolution of the monarchy uh, the monarchy the monasteries and then there's dark fire which is where there's this weird substance and they're trying to work out if it's magic or what's happening um sovereign that's to do with the progress, uh, I think, and they're at they're up north somewhere. Is it York Minster? You know, when he married that really young one, is it the Catherine Howard? And um, they all they trail around the country, and all these towns have to get ready and everything. He gets he gets embroiled in court affairs. He doesn't want to. He wants to just keep himself out of trouble, and he always gets sucked in. Whether it's Cromwell who's kind of employing him, and then later on, Bishop. Cranmer I think they're like oh I need you on an urgent top secret matter and he's like oh no and this one was I reckon the most exciting one so this is book four um it says on the back don't expect to put this book down until you've seen it through to the apocalyptic fight finale it's um a serial killer situation a friend of his is murdered and then so he wants to find out to sort of avenge him and it's just real intrigue and again it was quite near the end of the book that I figured out who the culprit was I hate that when it's too easy um there's two more there's Heartstone and Lamentation and I'm going to be gutted when I've got to the end of this series I highly highly recommend these books he's a really interesting character okay audible now I'm just going to hold up my iPad for this because I'm so high tech <laughs> Um, okay, now this, yes. oh, she has it's on, it's on, stop. Um, basically, I'm in a book club, and sometimes the book club book is not something I would choose to read, but I try to persevere. I will say, uh, my style of being a reader is that I definitely go through phases. I love books, I'm very interested in books, I love buying books. My bookshelf down in the lounge is the, you know I've it's quite well curated and it's divided into types of books or I have books that I've read but that they're really special to me and I'd probably reread or I'd want to hand them on to other people um in terms of general fiction a lot of things say like this now that I've read it I wouldn't read it again and I will either give this to a friend to read and then tell them to pass it on I don't have the space um I go through phases 
I think social media and fiddling around on one's phone for me sometimes sort of reduces my ability to focus and concentrate and really dings my attention span. So I've had to work really hard to retrain myself to read every day, but I do read for at least 40 minutes a day. Uh, a really helpful bridge back into that for me has been Audible in that I will often buy a novel. Even these ones, I had a phase where I just didn't get to pick it up regularly enough. So then when I pick it up, I'd be like, who is that character? What the hell? You know, yeah, I have to read daily to really stay motivated and stay hooked into whatever I'm reading. So I downloaded Audible. Uh, I used it for something else at first. I used it for bedtime stories for Cece when she had trouble sleeping and that really worked, like Winnie the Pooh and stuff. And she's not looking at a screen, so she just lies back, relaxes and listens. And then like, I will have a novel often paper copy I don't like Kindles or reading on any devices and then I will have the audiobook and I kind of will dip between so I can listen to the audiobook when I'm driving or when I'm in the kitchen cooking or whatever and then I can actually when I have the time like at bedtime or on a quiet afternoon I can actually read the book and that gets me further into the book quicker and I just find it really helpful for me we've just got rid of our actual physical big bulky hi-fi equipment and we've now just got like um, Bose little wireless speakers and also a Roberts radio that's Bluetooth so that I can listen to stuff uh, not just you know from my phone but properly around the house and I've just been obsessed with Audible and I find that I'm I still do it a bit because I really enjoy it but I'm watching um, a bit less TV box set stuff a bit less YouTube and listening to books and reading books more and that nurtures my soul anyway so I've said that I digress so my book club book was this often I so I find it really hard to force myself to read something that I'm not in really interested in from the off so this book hot milk oh this isn't gonna work um by Deborah Levy is this story about this young woman that goes to Spain with her mum she's a bit lost in life She's got no direction, the girl, she's um, a barista in a coffee shop, yet she's a qualified anthropologist. And um, I, f I don't know what it is, I just found the book a bit obnoxious. However, when I downloaded the audiobook, it's read by Roma Lagari, who's one of my favorite actresses. And I really enjoyed the way she delivered it. And I got to the end of it, but I can't recommend the book because I found the subject matter is a little bit odd and you don't really know where it's going. The, all the main characters, so this young woman has some romance interest with a guy and a girl and the mother is like a hypochondriac and has all these health issues and they go to this mysterious clinic. But it doesn't all just come together for me. I wasn't rooting for anyone. I didn't really love any of the characters so I didn't really give a monkeys what happened to them. That sounds awful. There was no hero for me. There was no one who I was like, oh, I hope this is all right. And there's a lot of sarcasm and I don't know. I just, it was a chore. But by using Audible and reading the book, I kind of limped along to the end. Um, this I can really recommend. I'm still listening to this now, but it's really great. So this is, um, oh, why won't it? Oh, it's still downloading. Educated by Tara Westover. So um, this is an account, a non-fiction account by this girl who grew up in a really secluded, isolated Mormon community where they weren't really allowed TV, they didn't go to school, they were homeschooled. The only things they had access to were the books that, mainly religious texts and stuff that her father wanted them to listen to. And it's about her passion about education and do we or do we not have a right to education? If you don't have it, you don't take it for granted, you go out and seek it. Whereas a lot of us go through the school system because that's just what we do. And she ended up, um, and I can't remember, I can never remember, if it's, she ended up going to a local Mormon college, but from there she springboarded, having had no schooling, to studying in England. She went to Oxford or Cambridge, and it's probably pretty important which one, but I can't remember. Um, I'm still listening to that. I'm not at the end yet, but it's a really interesting story. She ended up being estranged from, I think, not maybe all of them, but relationships between her and her family really broke down because she wanted to live differently to them. And it's really hard to do that and not then challenge where you've come from. So that's a really, really 
I'm just trying to um, there educated by Tara Westover it's back to front that's no good um, anything else in here that I've listened to lately oh um, oh I can't find it now I listened to Eddie Izzard memoir believe me a memoir of love death and jazz chickens I love Eddie Izzard the comedian um, also, I listened to Fire and Fury by Michael Wolfe. This was this kind of big headline grabbing expose about the White House. I'm not sure I could talk about this whole stuff for like half an hour. Obviously, I'm not pro Trump, but I was interested in this guy's take. It's quite sensationalist. And then I think when the book was like serialized in the papers, there's a lot of hot air. And then actually, what is revealed in the book, I'm not sure that it was that explosive or there or there was that many interesting revelations i do find it fascinating that he had so much access and they didn't really seem to know what he was doing which says a lot about the chaos and disorganization of that administration um what else um oh there's loads in here that i haven't listened to yet like um, the other thing you can get on audible is full cast recordings so they're like plays so um Tale of Two Cities, because I've read that as a teenager and I wanted to revisit it, but I thought, I don't know if I want to wade through it again, I'd like to listen to it. And they have it on Audible, narrated by um, Simon Callow, he's got a great voice. Um, and as I said about full cast recordings, I absolutely love Jane Austen, and they have uh, Northanger Abbey, done as a drama, and the cast includes Emma Thompson, Douglas Booth, Eleanor Tomlinson, uh, Jeremy Irvin, Lily Cole, really good cast, so I can't wait. Maybe if I have like the flu or something and I'm tucked up in bed, that's something nice to listen to. You can listen to it all day and like drift in and out. So that's what's on my Audible and what I've been reading. I hope you found this interesting and um, leave your suggestions of good reads um, that you think I might like down below. And if you read any of these books or you have read any of these books, please leave a comment down below telling me what you thought or if your opinions are completely different to mine, I'd be really interested to know. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel and give me as much feedback as possible. Constructive and friendly only, please. Um, we don't need any nastiness. But I like to know what you enjoy and I'm really enthused and back into doing my YouTube channel. So it would be great if I could have feedback. Obviously I look at how many people like the video and I get a sense of what people don't enjoy and I maybe wouldn't do that so much and stuff like that. So it all helps. And if you give me some support and subscribe, it really spurs me on to keep going because I feel like what I'm doing is worth spending the time doing. Anyway, I hope you're all well and I'll see you in my next video which is going to be all about Glossier. Bye guys.